Hey guys, Movie Van here to bring you a very special video. Some time back I showed you how to make your own Power Rangers costume. But there's one thing I didn't do. I didn't show you how to make the Power Lance. Instead, I just put a link below showing how the Prop Master made his Power Lance. Which I did follow his instructions, except I made a few changes. For instance, when I made my Power Lance, I made it out of acrylic plastic, which made it a lot tougher. However, I thought that, you know, maybe I should show everyone how I did it, because there were some very big differences. And I'm going to help everybody with this one, because when he made his video, no offense to him, I mean, he made his video, it worked for him, but he made it with quite a few little issues that I had. Like, one, there was something that he should have probably not bothered with, but I'll get into that later. But the most important thing, when he showed you how the lance should look like on paper, he did not give you a template. Now I actually took the liberty to create a template for you. You can actually find it online. In fact, I'll put my little uh, Wix website down below. Let's get started. One important tip. I would suggest that when you print out your template, first you cut it out and then you draw it onto a piece of cardboard. So that way it'll be a lot easier to draw multiple, you know, templates here. And it doesn't have to be a real thick cardboard or anything like that. I used the cardboard from a Dr. Pepper box. That's all I needed. And, you know, these things have served me well ever since. For this project, you're going to need the following supplies. PVC pipe or a wooden dowel that is an inch thick, Gorilla tape, blue duct tape, aluminum tape or silver duct tape, a marker or a pencil, a pair of scissors, and if you have an X-Acto knife, get that too, newspaper or magazines, and a pop can. Because I had a ton of cardboard left over and really no acrylic plastic, plus my cats were getting a little nosy lately, I decided to go with the cardboard for a change. However, if you choose to use acrylic plastic, I recommend getting yourself an oscillating tool so you can cut the pieces out. Because the pieces are mostly triangular in shape, and I know you're supposed to use like a scoring tool and break the plastic, but a lot of these pieces are pretty small and narrow out to a point and those points break like glass. Believe me, I tried. I found that by using the oscillating tool, I could get a straight even cut with no trouble at all. Now, I'm not going to say that you've got to go get one. I just happen to have one. And if you have one, use it. But be warned, this tool is very dangerous. It's very sharp, and when you cut into that plastic, it's going to kick up a lot of dust. So always wear goggles and a mask. Now that I got that out of the way, let's begin. The first thing you want to do is go to my website, download the template, and draw your individual pieces right there on the cardboard or the acrylic plastic. Of course, if you want to do it the hard way and do it freehand, that's up to you. But I'll tell you, it's a lot easier with the template. When you're done, cut all the pieces out and label them just as they are on the template. Next, measure out the dowel or the PVC however length you want it. You could use the whole shaft, which I recommend you go for 63 inches, but if you want to go for the power lance being split in two, just cut it to 63 inches in length and then find dead center and cut it right there. When you're done with that, get all the individual pieces and arrange them just like they are on this picture right here. You gotta make four of these, so be sure you got all your pieces in order. Grab your Gorilla Tape and start taping the pieces together. I prefer Gorilla Tape because it's strong and sturdy and doesn't come off very easily. But if you prefer to use just regular duct tape, go ahead, it'll probably work. What you want to do here is you want to start from the tip, and I mean the very tip in the middle of the Triton. You get the Gorilla Tape and you cut pieces off, and what you got to do is you got to make sure all the pieces go in an angle. That way, it'll all look nice and sharp like a real blade. Or as close as you could possibly get, anyway. For all the trine pieces, you definitely want to have them go at a good 45 degree angle. Especially for the tip of the trine. Make it look like a triangle shape all the way around. Unfortunately, there's really no way I could just show you exactly how to do this. It's one of those things you have to really kind of do on your own. My advice, get the number 7 left and right and just bend them at a good angle. Something like this. Do the same for parts 3 and 4 and for parts two and five. Part number six, I would suggest you try to have it go somewhat loosely. That way it'll be a lot easier to connect as you go along. Attach the center tip to the number one piece, 
Then attach both the right and left forks of the Triton to the centerpiece as well. If there's a little gap around the number 6 area, just cover it with duct tape. Be sure to repeat this process three more times. Now get two of the Triton faces that you made, line them up with the angles arching inward on each other, and duct tape them together. Be sure you cover every gap. Believe it or not, when the prop master made this part, he used barbecue skewers in between all the cardboard pieces. I find that's not necessary as long as you have a good roll of Gorilla Tape with you. Now that you got it all taped together, it's time to stuff it with newspaper. If you don't have any newspaper, just use magazines. That's what I did. What you want to do is you want to rip them apart and just jam them in there. Just jam it into every fork all the way out. When you got all the forks filled, it's time to bring the shaft in. Just jam the thing in there and lower down the cardboard just slightly enough where you can draw a line right where it meets. Cut off a small piece of Gorilla Tape, roll it over, and put it right on the shaft, both sides. That way the cardboard will stick to the dowel. Now that you got them together, you want to cover the final gaps between the shaft and the cardboard with Gorilla Tape. But be sure you cover the bottoms of the trident and the sides of the cardboard. Do not cover the end that's attached to the dowel just yet. Once it's taped up, you want to jam more newspaper or magazines in there. Now this part's going to be a little tough because the sticky side of the tape is going to catch the paper. What you want to do is you want to get yourself a thin stick, like an old paintbrush or something, and just jam some small pieces in. That way the small pieces will cover the Gorilla Tape. After that, you can jam bigger pieces in there and just keep on going until everything feels rock solid. And most importantly, that the shaft is not moving in there. When you've reached that point, tape off the very end. Wrap all the forks of the trident in aluminum or silver duct tape. When that's done, wrap the base of the trident in blue duct tape. If you don't know exactly where to put the blue, just look up a few pictures online. Next, cut out two narrow strips from the blue duct tape to cover the very center of the trident where it creates a V shape. This you might want to use an X-Acto knife. If you don't have one, a good pair of scissors will do that too. Of course, the trick is laying the strips down just right. You want them to reach the tip of the center piece, and I'm talking your number one piece. If you're having a hard time trying to see it, feel around in there, or get the template out and line her up. That way you'll find the very tip of that, and you can go from there. After you're done with the trident, wrap the entire shaft in blue duct tape. Next, cut your aluminum or silver duct tape into three inch pieces and cover the very end of the shaft. Next, grab your pop can and marker or pencil and trace a complete circle around it. Then with the piece you've already cut out, you gotta draw a circle within the circle. How you want it to look is completely up to you. I try and make it as close to this kind of range as possible. Cut out the whole circle, then cut out the inner circle. Next, use that circle to draw three more just like it. Get the first ring that you already cut out and bend it to make it come like a little volcano. Then you want to have the end pieces that you cut out overlap each other. When you got it right where you want it, cut that part right off and then duct tape them together. Do the same for the other three. Place the ring on a sheet of cardboard and trace the outside so you have a complete bottom. Cut out that circle and duct tape it to the ring. Do the same for the other three. Then cover all four pieces with blue duct tape. Next we get those four little inner circles that we already cut out. Then we try to fit them into the center piece of this little cone that we made. The important thing here is that it has to fit right in there. So if it doesn't fit, just take some off the edge until it does. Once you got the inner circle in, it should stay in because it's real snug. However, if you want to put some duct tape between it so it'll stay, that's okay too. Now you need to find yourself a picture of the Triceratops power coin. Of course if you want to draw it, go ahead, but if you're like me and you can't draw very well, just find one, resize it, and print it out. Of course if you're a fan like me, you probably have a few Power Rangers books lying around. I found that my old Power Rangers watercolor book had the power coins on there, so I just copied it. Of course you'll want to do that four times. Now all you have to do is cut out the power coins and attach each one of them to the little cone shapes. Dead center, of course. Now you could use printable label paper to make these power coins, but I find that if you just use regular printer paper and grab yourself a thing of good old Elmer's rubber cement glue, it'll stay put. And now you get the cone shape, line it up right dead center on the trident, and duct tape it down. And be sure to do the same with the other three cone shapes. Now that you've finished putting it together, you now have yourself a power lance that you could be proud to take to the next Comic Con. And of course, you know, you could just do a whole staff like I did the first time, but for my demonstration I decided to make just the individual ones. That way, whenever I go to the Comic-Con, I could go with the full lance, or just these. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you give this a try, because it was pretty fun to make.
It's a lot better, I think, with the acrylic plastic because this stuff's a little squishy and the details, well, let me put it to you this way. You can't really see too many good indentations like you could on my uh, acrylic plastic one. But, you know, cardboard is cheap. It's available. It's not a bad thing to have around the house. And, you know, you don't have to worry about somebody getting hurt with this. So do whatever works for you. This is Movie Fan, signing off.